Um, I have a video of Michael Irvin that was... Shit. Fuck. Damn. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Fucking win. Ow. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, <laughs> without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods on this finally freaking Friday. You know, it is crazy it is crazy how much is going on with the dallas cowboys this shit is crazy we are almost a month away from losing to the green bay packers and we're still feeling the ramifications and getting people that are finally coming out of their shell to say what the heck happened before i get in a little deeper let me say shout out I was um, blessed. Um, I'm blessed with an incredible wife of 20 years, but her job working with the United Way before she retired was incredible for me being a football fan. And in 2012, we ended up doing a road trip to all of the NFL cities. I drove over 14,500 14, miles going to NFL city to NFL city. We did take a plane in a couple spots, but for the most part, it was across the country we literally drove all the way to california we went and did like a loop-de-loop -loop in the middle of the country we did an east coast wing and things and i got to meet some incredible players and i dug deep i dug deep back into the files and facebook how everything really got started here on me for me with youtube and this was 2012 with cam hayward at their at Latrobe, Pennsylvania, at their training camp, got to meet him. He was an incredible player, an incredible person who was already doing incredible things off the field, and um, we just knew that he was a great person. And for him to be an NFL Man of the Year, it, it's very uh, it it makes me happy for him, and even happier for all the lives that he touches. So shout out to Cam Hayward on this morning, and. Um, I tell you, at the moment, I wish we had more guys that were like Cam Hayward because it's crazy right now. You know, we, we, we want to buy into what Jerry Jones says, you know, we're going all in, you know, we're, we're going to make a big splash in things with the head coach. Um, from my from what I'm hearing through the grapevine, the deal technically is not done yet with Mike Zimmer that they worked through the night on this thing and stuff, but the Joneses are still being cheap on trying to get this contract done. And so, you know, we, we feel like it's going to get done, but, you know, talk is cheap. Let, let's see what you really do. Let's see what you guys really do. Because today, I believe, is, is it the 9th? You know, this month is two days shorter. Two days shorter. Actually, we get an extra one for February. This year it's 29, but it's still two days shorter than most months. 29 days. Today is the 9th. The 9th. If you had those other two days added to this month, it would be a month. Or excuse me, taken away from the 31 days. My math is kind of crazy. But come the 11th, the 11th is legal tampering. That's when you can start talking to the free agents out there. And as of yet, I don't know what's changed. I don't know what's changed. But I can tell you this thing. Shout out to Law Nation on this video right here that's gone crazy on Twitter and things. Law Nation putting in all the work. I missed this when it came out. Uh, I was on the road getting back home here. But D-Law talking about what happened with the Green Bay Packers has set off kind of a firestorm. And I'm going to take you back a little bit further to make it even worse. Listen in. 
you mentioned how you wish your team was here. Mm -hmm. What happened and why your team isn't here? Uh, all honesty, I think the main thing is we was burned out, man. Uh, you know, long season, um, team dominantly healthy throughout the season. You know, um, the legs get tired. Football rewards the guys that are in great condition. Yep. That's when you have fun. When you're kicking somebody's ass and they're sucking for win. There was a great coach one time says, fatigue. It was actually George Patton. Of us all. When you're tired, you make mistakes, you don't do what's right, and your will to win all of a sudden starts to waver just a little bit. You get tired and all of a sudden you don't have that same fight. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. If you're in great shape, if you can run like a deer, at the end of the ball game, you're going to be smiling and having fun. And let me tell you something, guys. It's nothing better. This is going to be the greatest time in your life. I used to sit in this same ass room. I look at the schedule and I said, God, oh, I can't wait till Oklahoma comes in here. I can't wait till Florida comes in here. I want to kick their ass. And that's what you should feel. This is why you came to Miami. That's why you wanted to be a hurricane. But you can only do it if you're in great shape. And if you're not sucking for win at the end of the game. And when you look across the way and that guy is hanging down. He is a coward. He's a coward because he's tired. He's a coward because he's tired. You know, I, I can accept. I can accept. You know what? It was a bad call by the referees. I can accept. You know, today just wasn't our day. We didn't have it. I can understand being out coached because the, that coach is after there's paid to beat you. But I cannot accept tired. Me personally, tired is not in my vocabulary. I learned that from football. I've learned that no matter how hard you push, no matter how beaten, exhausted you are, you still have more. And that's about being a dog. Now, I want to go back because <laughs> we're talking about the same shit. This ain't nothing new. This is from October 2020 when we had Mike Nolan. D-Law, in his own words. Right, we have Demarcus Lawrence. Go ahead. Demarcus, how, how would you address the, the defensive struggles you had as a, as a unit today on that side of the ball? Uh, in my own words, I'll call it soft. Um, we got to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Um, we got to play together as one. Um, and I don't feel like um, we're holding ourselves accountable, including myself. So uh, I call the shit soft, and we'll get better from it. Marcus, how surprised the run defense what happened today? Say it again. How surprising is it to see this? Uh, today, you know they're going to run the ball and they're able to go for 307 yards. Yeah, uh, it's not no surprise. Uh, I mean, we just got to do a better job of comparing. I mean, um, preparing and you know, really come with our full hearts in the game and play this game for 60 minutes straight. Uh, it's just all about bowing down and really showing you know that you're a real man out there and uh, playing together. <laughs> Marcus, do you think your scheme is sound enough to try and stop offenses moving forward? It's not my job to think about uh, what's right or what's wrong. It's all my job is to go out there and try to make as many plays to help my team win the game. Um, and I don't feel like I'm doing that right now, and I'll get back to it. Marcus, why do you think this team is so 
units one and three? Uh, like I said, uh, I mean, we came out the gate soft, uh, you know, and in different words, I can call it something else, but uh, it's just all about having some grit and you know, playing balls to the wall and going out there and giving it everything you got. You cut it in and out. You said about fixing it, something. In recent weeks, the passing game has challenged y'all primarily, but today the running game was a big problem. What do you attribute that to, and what do you see to fix that? Uh, I mean, just growing up and playing like real men out there, um, and not like kids. Uh, we gotta attack people before uh, they try to attack us, and I feel like we're doing a lot of catching, and we gonna get better from it. Up in the front. Right. It, it, why aren't you guys attacking? Why, why is it more sitting back, to, like you kind of said? Uh, like I said earlier, it's not uh, my job to, you know, worry about scheming or worrying about what the next man doing. I already got a hard enough job myself. But like I said, uh, it's all about just attacking, and I don't feel like we're doing that at all as a unit. Been here for a while, knowing the knowing the nucleus of this team, is it is it a little bit surprising you found yourself in this spot right now? Um, uh, I wouldn't say it's surprising. Uh, if you think you're gonna sit here and get a whole new coaching staff staff and you know win every game and shoot for the stars, uh, you got a big surprise coming, and <laughs> you know that was our surprise. Even we got so much talent, but uh, you know without that grit, without that toughness, uh, talent don't mean nothing in the NFL. So it's all about <laughs> us coming together, figuring it out, and um, getting better from it. Wow! I appreciate y'all time today. Thank you. Wow. The following is a production of Dallas Cowboys. Wow. The more things change, the more they stay the same. He literally said it doesn't matter who comes in here and coaches. And is that a foreshadowing? I remember that, that term from, from English. Foreshadowing. Yeah. We were soft in 2020. What's changed? What's changed? I am completely at a loss right now with this situation. D-Law is an incredible talent. Incredible. He has had a great career with the Dallas Cowboys. You know, people looked when he first got that contract that, you know, he was getting overpaid and stuff because we had been, you know, bitten and screwed over so many big contracts. That was one of the few ones that you looked and said, D-Law has been doing his job. He doesn't get the big sack numbers, but he's one of the best run-stopping defenders out there, edge rushers. But I don't know what it is. It's not a, a lack of ability. I've seen it. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give them some pause because I still believe that they were shorthanded, that they were shorthanded as far as the linebackers and on the defensive front. You know, I, as we look at the, the team that's there in the Super Bowl, actually both of those teams, Kansas City this year, without that defense, as great as Pat Mahomes is, he's not in the Super Bowl. If they don't get three takeaways from Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens, they're not in the Super Bowl. They took the ball away when they were going in on the one-yard line. They took it when they were about to go in and score a touchdown and an interception. They turned it over. They, they got the ball on the 20-yard line where they got an easy score. You can give all the credit to Pat Mahomes, but without that defense, they're not there. And take a look at that defensive front. As much as we go ahead and talk about, you know, uh, Micah Parsons is, is uh, selfish because he's not elite in two places. This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Because Fred Warner's not asked to be an edge rusher and a linebacker because he's got Nick Bosa and Chase Young and Randy Gregory and Hargrave 
and Armstead up in front of him. He's got some horses. There's not a weakness that is in front of him. You can't say that about the Cowboys. I will give you that one. But you can't say playing at home as the number two seed that you were tired going against a team that just rolled into town. You can't say you're tired, bro. You can't. That... I wish I had the answers. I, I, I honestly wish I had the answers to this one. But I don't. This is... Mike Nolan for that season to Dan Quinn for three years. And we've gone full circle of we were tired from we were soft. And now we're about to get a new coach. Maybe, just maybe, Dan Quinn, let, let me say this. I loved Dan Quinn, but Dan Quinn is dead to me now. He is dead. He's not far away. He ain't far away. Ashburn ain't but about 20 miles from here. FedEx Field's about 25 miles from here. Can't stand him, although they do. He does have one of the guys that I love, John Ridgway. But he's dead to me. Dan Quinn is a teacher. Dan Quinn is the guy, the coach that you always love having. He teaches, he executes, and everything else. And maybe that's not what they needed. Maybe he's not the guy to put a foot in your ass. See, I think about Jimmy Johnson, who was talking about fatigue there. Jimmy Johnson, who looked like he had more passion at halftime of that game than anybody on the Dallas Cowboys organization. If you screwed up, you knew there was ramifications. You knew as the kicker who was asthmatic, who couldn't run gassers, take your asthmatic ass over in that field and get cut. Get, get, you're getting cut. He cut him. He cut him. Holding players accountable and being ready because the coaches can only do so much especially with the way the rules are today where we don't really practice 14 padded practices during the season. That means it's on you, bro, to make sure your ass is in the best shape of your life because this time is short. I'm sorry. That's the reason, but that damn sure ain't an excuse. And that may explain a lot why the Cowboys fail Every time we get to the playoffs, because we're tired. I, I'm tired, Mom. I, you need a nap? Get out of here with that shit. Sorry. Just get out. The more I think about it, the more I'm pissed off. I, I literally feel like just going, just throwing all this shit off the counter, but I can't afford to pay to replace all this shit. But I feel like throwing something. Sorry. Son, you got to do better than this. Sometimes they make it so hard to be a cowboy fan.